Right. You're a hard act to follow. Okay, this is going to be very serious. And I can't actually read my script either. Okay, so I want to show you two projects. I'm an architect, <coughs> and um, I'm going to show you two projects that I've done that I think are relevant to what um, our group are doing. I'm one of the facilitators in Test Unit and for what we're doing um, at Baird's Bray. Uh, the first is a landscape proposal for a public park in um, Portland off the south coast of England. And the second is my studio in um, Herefordshire, also in England. So first off, this is an aerial photograph of the Colorado River by James Corner and Alex McLean. We can see the impact that something as small as a barbed wire fence <coughs> has had on a whole large-scale landscape. Outside the line, it's been grazed by cattle. Inside, it hasn't. The fence is so small, we can't see it, but the, the effect is tangible. And that was my ambition for uh, a project on this island. And it's also what I think um, the effect of test, test unit can be on the regeneration of this area. So um, I'm interested in this kind of a small intervention having a very large impact and a large effect. Uh, so <coughs> um, I, uh, Portland is quarried. It's where all Portland stone comes from that um, St. Paul's Cathedral is built out of, the white limestone that large swathes of London are built out of. St. Paul's came from one of these holes here. Um <coughs> and um, uh, this is a photograph of all the quarry. On the left was an image of all the um, what the island would look like if all the stone was quarried. Now, um, about 75% of the material that's extracted to get at the Portland stone is poured back. And my pro proposal was um, to intervene in how the material was poured back. So I wasn't going to interfere with how it was extracted, but how it was poured back um, into those big holes. And this is one of the devices that I would use to do that. It's an aligning device. Um, this tube is placed in the bottom of a quarry and aligned with the sun. And once fixed, it acts like a sundial, allowing the sunlight to pass down the tube for one hour into a patch of shadow that it creates. This time scale is juxtaposed <coughs> against the time scale that's frozen in the landscape, which is this Jurassic um, period where the limestone was laid down. It's 150 million years old. So this period of an hour that you watch in a shadow is really overlaid onto a, a, a piece of a layer that was um, last seen, or not by humans, but last exposed 150 million years ago. So I was interested in <coughs> creating a landscape that actually enabled that experience on many different levels. And I did drawings to explore how sunlight might work in this way at different um, times of day, at different seasons, and developed a building strategy from these kind of explorations. This shows how the device works. Um, in order for it to work, it has to have a clear line of view to the sun, um, which sets up a series of sort of invisible lines around the quarry, and the material is poured back until it um, must stop at one of these invisible lines. So you can see just about <coughs> the device and the material that's poured back. And um, these drawings um, show the how the, the um, landscape might transform large-scale landscape drawings at the top and a kind of smaller-scale building um, drawings at the bottom suggest how the landscape might have transformed over um, a period of about 40 years whilst the quarrying took place. Now, the other end of the scale is my studio in Herefordshire. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> um, <coughs> and um, we've talked a lot about context and palimpsest in our unit, in our group um, that we've been working with. And um, I think that this project is really about that. Um, so um, first of all, th the building was in a process of collapse when we acquired it. So the first thing that we wanted to do was kind of prop it up and um, make it stable enough to work with. But um, <coughs> originally, actually, we were going to develop it, uh, demolish it completely, just get rid of it and build a nice new building. We're architects. We want to build new buildings. So that was our kind of initial intent. But um, we were told by planning conservation officer that we should really keep it. So we started thinking about how we should keep it. And um, we didn't want to renovate it because really um, it's all the kind of traces that have uh, been accumulating over time that are exciting and interesting about it, not, not the kind of timbers themselves particularly. So we put a new building around the outside of it with a steel frame, timber infill, openings where the old openings were, but also adding new openings where we wanted to create sunlight and um, views out. And um, <coughs> we suspended the old building where it needed support from the, t the, from the steel frame. So there's a series of kind of straps 
around the building where it needs to be, su needs to be supported. And the new part um, has been designed to be kind of as minimal and anonymous, almost sort of paper-like as possible. <coughs> and um, uh, the image above shows the kitchen before and the kitchen after. And all we've done to this space is to create a window within a piece of timber frame. We've even kept um, a part of the kind of structure that was, we think, um, supporting a manger when it was a stable before it was a kitchen. And um, there's a whole uh, discussion that we had about what to keep and what not to keep. And we're interested in actually deciding to keep everything because we're interested in the kind of curious, unexplained, like a ball of wire that's just hanging from a pin, or the ivy, um, which actually was the cause of the destruction of this building in the first place. We're still designing and making this building, and um, there is my partner and designer, David Connor, who we've done this project together, and this is, a st this is the balustrade that we're prototyping. We're using all local labor and skills. This is made in the local industrial estate, and the great thing about that is that he'll make a bit. We can try it out and test it. We've clad the entire building in black corrugated metal because that's the kind of vernacular of the area where we are. Lots of barns look a bit like this and tried to detail it so that um, it's as kind of minimal, no gutters and no, f no big flashing. So it actually looks like an old barn except for perhaps big windows. And then inside this big window is my favorite space, which is the old building um, that we started with. And I sit in the space between that and the view and it's really a lovely place to work. So, um, thank you very much.